Um, hello, my fellow comic book collectors. Uh, today is the price variance, and we're going to be doing a series of uh, shows coming up over the next few weeks, kind of in tune with the whole idea of looking forward to the new year and some of the things that are happening this year. So there's there's a bunch of major movies that are coming out. I mean, we, we sort of missed out on a few years of movies, and I think that they're just going to be overwhelming us with MCU and DCU movies and uh, TV series. Uh, Disney Plus is going crazy, trying to have as many shows as they want. <laughs> you know, it's like, so we're going to get some amazing stuff this year. And that's, that's good for us comic uh, buyers. So um, with that being said, we're going to each look at uh, one movie or TV series that are coming out this year. And some of the key books that you might want to pick up if you're interested in those series. Um, we're going to do one each per channel. <laughs> so, so you're going to get to see four different um, movie or TV series if you watch the first part, which is on this channel, and watch part two, which is going to be on Mark's channel. So lots of spec, <laughs> like huge amount of spec uh, potential here. So with that being said, we're going to let Mark show his very first and explain his first movie title. Or okay, well, my, yeah, so my <laughs> one is a movie, is a television series coming up on Netflix, um, and it's based on Neil Gaiman's The Sandman. Mm -hmm. So uh, Neil Gaiman's Sandman started in uh, 1989, and it ran for 75 issues and finished in uh, 1995. Um, what, when, when he was asked why he stopped Neil Gaiman just said because I'd written I'd written it out that was the end of the story which I think is a pretty good answer <laughs> yeah. um, it, uh, it was one of the few series that I actually have co I collected the entire series as it came out so it was mm -hmm. right when I was collecting and I bought number one to number 100, to number 75, new straight from my local comic shop. And I actually bought two copies of quite a number of them. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, Very, yeah, you did well. <laughs> I did. So they've been sat up in my attic um, for, you know, for 20, 20 odd years. Um, and I'm, it was one of my favourite all-time comics. Uh, Neil Gaiman is one of my favourite all-time writers, both of comics and of books. So I am hugely excited for the uh, Sandman TV series on Netflix. We have had a trailer and it looked tremendous. It was yeah, it, it looked awesome. entirely faithful to the, to the first issue of the comic. Um, we've got uh, effectively in the first issue um, a, a, a sort of um, famous occultist casts a spell to try and trap death so that he can live forever, but he accidentally captures the Sandman instead. And so the first issue of the Sandman, which is a tremendous issue, um, uh, is about uh, Sandman being captured by this occultist, and I think he captures him for something like 760 to 70 years. Uh, the occultist dies during that period of time, and his son takes over, um, uh, keeping the Sandman captive. So here we have it. This is Sandman number one by Neil Gaiman uh, from 1989. Um, Luckily, this is one of the ones I bought two copies of, new. Oh, wow. Uh, this is an expensive comic. In a 9.8, it'll cost you anything between $1,500 and $2,000. And in a raw, high-grade raw, you're probably going to pay six or $700 for this now. Um, so this is an expensive comic. It's the most expensive comic in the, in the series. Um, but it's for me, it's an absolute iconic comic and I can't wait to uh, get the Sandman film. So that's my first one I'm showing here, Sandman one. It's not really a spec book because this has already <laughs> taken off. Um, so yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure this has a lot further to run. Um, but uh, I think for long term, it's, it's a good investment. This is, you know, long term and I'm talking five, yeah, 10, yeah. 15 years. This is a good investment because it's a key comic of a key character. It is the first appearance of Morbius, 
uh, the Sandman. Um, so yes, as a long-term investment, it's good. Um, it's risen a lot quite in the last year or so. So I'm not sure how much more it will rise um, in up, coming up to the TV series. Um, actually, you know what's funny about that book? It recently dipped. Uh, it dipped about 30%. It's, it's still above, way above where it was in January, but it's yeah. dipped recently. So it's actually a good time to buy it. Um, um, okay, because, it might be. So one okay. of those weird things that happens is uh, people are have very short, short-term memories nowadays. And what I'm seeing is like, you know, the trailer comes out, there's huge hype, the price goes through the roof, and then a few weeks go by, and then the price <laughs> comes back down. That's you know. interesting, because when I went, I looked at I, one of the places that had quite a lot of 9.8s graded for sale was my comic shop. Mm -hmm. And the first one I saw listed was $2,300, but there were about five listed, and one of them was at $1,400. So that's what they I'm have saying. Nine point, that, so that's probably the reason why. Yeah. Um, probably the one at 2.3 was listed During a couple of months ago. Yep. And the, probably the one at 1.4 has just been listed recently. So that's probably reflecting what you're just saying. Yeah, yeah. So I've seen that. And then, so what will happen is there will be another trailer closer to that show release. And that, if you can buy before that, <laughs> you know, you can sort of pick it up relatively cheap, you know, during those slight dips. Um, and I think that's something to look for uh, with a lot of these things. What I've also noticed is normally uh, comic um, comics will kind of dip after the series has been out. Um, but I'm not seeing that dip as being a, as severe as it was in the past. Like, uh, for example, WandaVision books are still doing reasonably well. Mm -hmm. You know, they still yeah. sort of held their own a bit more than what you would have expected because the show is done. It's, you know, it's over. But it seems like they're actually holding their value more than what you would expect. So I, I think during the, the pre time, you know, like during when there's just the uh, previews and the, 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 the first trailers, that's the time that you can really see that fluctuation. But it becomes a lot more rock steady afterwards, which is kind of weird. It's not traditionally how things work, but it seems to be that's what's happening lately. Um, so I think there's still buying opportunities for that book. Um, you do. My, my, my spec or one show that I'm going to be talking about is a movie, uh, Thor Love and Thunder. And I like to keep uh, what I've noticed with MCU and um, especially with WandaVision and um, all the series that have come out is they're very, very slow about introducing characters. And they don't want to, it seems like they don't want to introduce too many characters. And they seem to leverage uh, characters that have already been kind of used. Um, and like maybe not used like 100%, but used kind of very lightly. Um, so for example, this is not related, but um, in um, the new Doctor Strange movie, we know that the nemesis, the main nemesis in the new Doctor Strange movie is evil Doctor Strange, right? Um, and but he was kind of introduced in the What If. Yeah. So so what I'm saying is they're kind of leveraging those things. Um, so uh, there's no Mephisto. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not. I don't think we're gonna have Mephisto. Okay. So <laughs> my point is that really that people are specking maybe too many characters, too broad, and I think you got to kind of narrow your focus to what's more almost more obvious. It's actually much more obvious with the MCU. And so with that being said, I'm going to show you my very first obvious spec uh, with Jane Foster. Uh, because we know that um, Jane Foster has been introduced. We know that she's going to be picking up, uh, you know, the, the, the hammer. And we know that she's going to be kind of the next Thor-like yeah. person. Yeah. So, so let's start with most basic, most basic spec well that would be jane foster's first appearance <laughs> oh wow <laughs> okay so we <laughs> keep it really really obvious um this is obviously a more pricey book you know this is a very pricey book um yeah. mine's a 5-0 so yeah it'd be pretty pretty expensive um so yeah so this is so this is a uh, journey into mystery 84 
Now, this is a like a double key because it's also Thor's second appearance. Um, but it is Jane Foster's first appearance. And therefore, uh, it's the most obvious spec. Um, and it's still a book where, you know, once we get that trailer, I think it will go up a bit more. So I think we still have that little bit of opportunity. Maybe not as much, you know, it's not going to see that massive swing where, you know, it's like some new character. Oh, that was Dollar Bin book yesterday. Well, this is more of a blue chip that, uh, you know, might see a little bit of a rise, you know, yeah. five, 10 percent, maybe 20 percent rise. It's not going to yeah. be 100 percent rise or like 10,000 percent rise like some of the books that we've seen. But um, it is definitely going to be, you know, a good percentage rise. Yeah. And if you're buying a blue chip, that's what you want to do. You want to buy something that has that little bit of growth. Because, you know, you're making pretty big, you know, it's big money and you're making a little bit more on that big money. So this would be my first choice. This is uh, Jane Foster's first appearance. Keep it really obvious. <laughs> like, yeah, that's so, nice. That, okay. That's good. Okay. So that, that was my first one. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Um, right. So um, I'm back onto the Sandman. So the, the, mm -hmm. my next pick um, is a very obvious pick. And it's the first appearance of death. Um, in, and it appears in issue eight. Um, so Sandman is a member of um, a group of sort of beings called the Endless. Um, I think there's five of them. Um, and this one, <coughs> one of the Endless is death. And she pretty much does what the normal death does, is that uh, when people die, she goes and gathers them up, gathers their souls up. Um, and Gaiman portrays her as a sort of goth, a goth girl, a sort of pale skinned goth girl who's got, who speaks in a very modern languagey sort of way. Um, and in fact, um, of, of his brothers and sisters, death is, death is the one that um, Morbius gets on best with. Uh, and he really uses her throughout the, uh, throughout the, series as a sort of counsellor you know when he when he's got problems he he sort of goes and finds death and has a chat with her and, and she generally provides him with pretty sage advice um so uh really cool character in the series death but this isn't this i'm afraid this one is expensive as well um not quite as expensive as issue one but it's not far off um mm -hmm. so uh yeah the first appearance of uh, death um, in, uh, well, Neil, Neil Gaiman's version of death anyway. Um, now, there has been some, uh, well, I haven't seen that death did not appear in the trailer because she's not in uh, episode, mm -hmm. she won't be in episode one. She doesn't appear until uh, episode eight. I think we do, we will see her in the television series. Um, yeah, and I think she's 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 black in the television series. Yeah, I'm I'm you know I'm open minded on that. Yep, you know black actors have played white characters perfectly successfully. Mm -hmm. You know um, I think you pointed out um, Nick Fury. Nick Fury is a good example. So for yeah. me, it depends on the quality of the acting. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, and you know Neil Gaiman is associated with this series. He is an executive producer. So mm -hmm. that gives me confidence that even though they might have done some swapping, um, it's still going to hold up. Now, um, I'd, have you listened to the um, Audible um, version of Sandman? No, no never. So Audible, uh, in the last few years, have put out two series now of Sandman. It is brilliant. Um, even though I've read all the comics, um, mm -hmm. the Audible series, it's a sort of like an Audible book. Um, the production values are fantastic. Neil Gaiman does the narrating, and then they've got a fantastic cast of, of actors playing the various parts, and it really is excellent. And if you haven't listened to that, I suggest you you um, get hold of Audible. I think the first one, if you're a member of Audible, the first uh, Sandman series is now free as part of your membership oh, wow. of Audible. Um so, uh, yeah, I really recommend that. Um, very good. And if the TV series is anywhere near as good as the Audible adaptation, uh, <laughs> then we're in for a real treat. 
Um, no, very few of the people who play the characters in the Audible book are actually doing the uh, playing the characters in the TV series. Yeah, because they're voice actors. It's totally different. Yeah. Uh, um, there's one exception, and that's the person who plays Michael the Crow. Um, the same. <laughs> Largely because I think you know it's just a voiceover. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. What we don't have a crow like. actor. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so that's my second pick. Um, and again, as Alan said, probably I think he's right. Actually, I think there has been a bit of a dip, um, and so now actually might be the right time to buy before a second trailer drops. I'm not sure if the the death first appearance has gone like that's number eight. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if that one has dipped as much. Strangely, it was the number one that dipped the most. I think it was. Had the biggest rise, therefore it dipped yeah. a bit more. Yes, yeah. but um, yeah, no, that's a great. Both of those are awesome specs so far. Um, okay, so my next one um, is another like kind of obvious one. I'm trying to keep it pretty obvious. I'm keeping it very Jane Foster <laughs> for now, uh, and that would be uh, the What If, the very first book where she kind of oh yes becomes. Yeah. Yeah, um, let me take it out so I can show it a bit better. Uh, That's the what really if nice... Jane Foster becomes Thor. Yeah, basically, what if she picks up wind, uh, uh, the hammer? What if yeah. she had found the hammer? Um, so basically, uh, this book is another one that's kind of, it actually went up a lot two years ago when they first talked about the movie and has also dipped and it's maybe a good time to buy. Um, so this is uh, the first uh, James Foster as Thor. The problem with this book, there is one issue that I see with this book is that it's uh, out of canon. So there's a separate book that you need to buy for in canon. But this is the what if, you know, and it's kind of the yeah. first time you see her as Thor. Um, so just be aware of that um, because comic buyers can be a little weird. You know, they will gravitate generally to that first in that role, but um, sometimes they will be a little bit more um, absolutist. Like, Oh, it's not Canon. It doesn't count. You know? <laughs> so, so you gotta be a little careful with that. That's why this is a little bit more of a shaky spec in my opinion, but I still see it as a strong spec, you know, because we know what's going to, we kind of, there's been a lot of uh, releases about uh, Thor Love and Thunder. You know, there's been video, uh, like, you know, things where they show um, Natalie Portman holding the hammer and <laughs> so yeah. they're pretty, they're making it pretty obvious what, what's going to, the movie's going to be about. So um, this is definitely going to happen. Um, so this would be the first of those, like kind of Jane yeah, Fox. Yeah, no, Foster, that's a great, that's a great pick. That's yeah. a great pick. So yeah, so <laughs> I'm keeping it pretty simple on that one. Yeah, so. no, both of those are great. Uh, okay, so now my next pick, uh, of what I try to like to do is I like to do some specs that are really cheap to pick up. Um, mm -hmm. So the first two of those are expensive comics and they're not cheap to pick up. Um, however, my next picks are, you know, $10 or less. Um, mm -hmm. And the first one, and this is criminally undervalued, um, and I've talked about this on my channel a couple of times, is the Sandman special uh, number one from 1991. Um, and it's about Orpheus in the underworld. Uh, and we're in the 90s, so this is a glow-in-the-dark cover. Mm -hmm. um, this is a tremendous read. It basically retells the story of Orpheus in the underworld, um, in this book, Orpheus is actually the son of, uh, of Mor Morpheus, the son of Sandman. Um, and of course, he goes, he, he, he goes down, uh, he's due to get married at the wedding ceremony. Before he gets married, his wife uh, gets killed. Uh, so he goes down into the underworld to try and retrieve her. Um, Lucifer basically says, okay, uh, Orpheus plays his, plays his lyre, I think it is, or he's a musician. Thing, yeah, uh, you've yeah. told, you've told, or his flute, or it might be a flute, I think. Mm -hmm. um, 
and uh, he plays it so beautifully. Lucifer agrees to let him take his love, uh, Eurydice, is it? I think it's Eurydice. Um, right. And uh, but as long as he doesn't look back before he leaves the gates of hell, and of course, just as he's leaving, he looks back and she's gone. Um, mm -hmm. It's a great story, uh, retold by in Neil Gaiman's own way, and it is a fairly critical part actually of the main Sandman run, because um, Orpheus in this gets his head lopped off. Um, but he's, he's immortal, so his head just stays alive and sits on a beach. Um, <laughs> and, in, okay. and, and in this, his father, it, it, he, he had disowned his father, and then he calls his father to help him, and his father, in this book, says he's not going to help him. In the main Sandman series, Morpheus changes his mind, and he actually enlists um, Johanna Constantine, um, during the French Revolution to go and retrieve um, Orpheus's head. So you can't have that story without having had the Orpheus story first. Yeah. So I think we may well get the Orpheus story at some stage in the next As like a little flashback or something, yeah. maybe? Yeah, or even as an episode. Mm -hmm. So you can still get this for $5. So... And is That's, that the first appearance of Orpheus as well? Or I, I believe it is, yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Double key. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so, so yeah, I mean, it's ridiculously cheap. People just have not clicked onto this at all. The weird thing is I have two copies of that. I'm not sure why. I picked it up twice for some reason. Well, I don't know why. I've got three copies because I think it's just ridiculous. Every time I look, I look at it and I say, is it still... Only three pounds <laughs> fifty. Buy it. <laughs> I know it's like it's like so underrated. I, I you know it's that that but that's the problem with DC in general. I would say <laughs> their books that are like um there was actually a really funny thing that I saw recently. Uh, they were showing the top ten best comics of all time, and you know you always think oh Marvel should dominate the list because Marvel's comics are so much more valuable. But the top 10 were all DC books, every single one of them, because the story level is just so much higher in DC. And Sandman is a, is a perfect example of that. Oh, the, just the writing is just insane. It's just like so awesome compared to pretty much anything that you'd see in Marvel. So, sorry, sorry, Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just it oh, is true it's just the writing in this is Neil Gaiman on top form I mean you know he's one mm -hmm. of the world's best writers um you know so getting him writing this sort of stuff in a comic you know it's you know this this is out outright virtually most comics you can think of mm -hmm. yeah no I, I I think yeah totally awesome um so um okay so I mentioned a lot of Jane Foster and my kind of thing, like my first two uh, things. I should mention some of the other characters that are obviously going to be there. Um, well, one, we kind of, we have confirmation about, and you always have to know who is, okay, who's the main like protagonist, which is Jane Foster in this case, I'd say, um, but who's the main antagonist? So, um, the main one of the things that they've already said has been cast is or you know it's already filmed is um gore, uh, gore the god butcher oh yeah okay so um you know this is uh gore the god butcher's first appearance and this is thor god of thunder number six um so yeah so he's like gonna go out and he's gonna slay some gods. <laughs> so there's gonna be some more respect around which gods he slays. Uh, but um, definitely uh, this book, I, I believe is kind of a obvious one. And it's another one where it's, we're, you know, we're, we're sort of in a good time right now. We have like a double, like a double whammy in terms of negative pricing. So, Generally, what ends up happening is uh, what we've seen is like April, May, no, uh, March, April, I'd say. Mar price was crazy for everything. You know, you yeah. could have like the crappiest dollar bin book and you'd get like 20 bucks for it. Um, <laughs> but then the summer things kind of dipped 
and July, August was really kind of like the worst time. Um, and then things around this time, people have bought their Christmas gifts. They're, <laughs> they're, they're kind of broke, right? And so uh, books have sort of dropped a bit right yeah. now. Yeah, and I, I think things will change in the new year. But, and once we get our trailer or something. Uh, so I think pretty much all of these ones that I'm going to mention were expensive, but have backed off. Uh, this is a good example of that, where I think you can get this. I'm not sure how much it is. I think it's the 50 to hundred dollar range, depending if yeah. it's raw or slab slab. It's going to be obviously like a few hundred dollar range, yeah. but, um, but I think it's, it's a good one. Uh, I don't have any dollar bin books on my, my list of books that I brought today, but uh, definitely this is one that I would recommend. Now that's a good one. Okay. Okay. Next up, I've got another one here. And this is Sandman related. Again, it's a nice, cheap one. And I think it's a great comic. It's a bit of social history. I've talked about it before. It's uh, Death, the High Cost of Living. This was produced in... Um, I think it was uh, 93, uh, we were in the height of the AIDS crisis. And basically mm -hmm. this is a comic in which Death, the character from Sandman, talks to people about AIDS, how to prevent AIDS, and how to put a condom on. <laughs> it's a how-to book. <laughs> so, and again, five dollars. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so those kind of, those are like, those are nice books because they're cheap specs. Like, you know, even if, even if it doesn't pan out as a good spec, it's still a good, good read. And it's Cost you $5. It's five bucks. Yeah. It's nothing. It's yeah. You know, a cup of coffee, not even actually a very cheap coffee nowadays. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, that's a great one. Uh, I love those ones where uh, what I always found with a lot of like, um, like things when people, Sandman is one of those series that people are not necessarily super familiar with. Like the comic readers are, but the general public isn't. And I yeah. think it's one of those ones where once the series comes out, it will introduce a whole new group of people. Yeah, you're to right, actually. You're right. And what will happen is they'll say, oh, what are other some other cool Sandman stories? And yeah. that would be one that they might pick yeah, up. Now's the time reason. to pick these cheap one up. Yeah, you're right, yep. actually. I, mean, I think that will happen. Mm -hmm. if it's a this is not the first appearance of Gore. This is the origin of God, uh, Gore the God Butcher. Just so I just wanted that to be clear. Um, his actual first appearance is in uh, Thor, uh, God of Thunder, number two. So just just so people are aware, <laughs> I didn't totally forget. I, I, I realized that um, this is the origin. But it's also the first appearance of Null. So that's a, a double key kind of component to it. Okay. Um, should I go into my next book? Yes. Be your next book. Um, okay. So this one is the next one. Um, so Gore, we know that Gore the God Butcher is going to be in the series. Um, well, he needs some gods to kill. So um, <laughs> this is the book where uh, we get introduced to a whole bunch of gods like Hermes, Hera, um, uh, I think Dionysus, like who else? Uh, okay, Ares, like, I, I wrote down the list because there's just so many gods introduced in this book. So it's Ares, Hermes, Hera, Dionysus, Armitis, uh, Armis, I should say, um, Vulcan. And um, so those are all gods that are introduced in here. So a lot, a lot of, you know, can, cannon fodder for uh, Gore the God Butcher to work with. <laughs> so, um, so this is one where uh, these are a whole bunch of really kind of major gods that get introduced in this book. Um, there's another book that you might want to pick up, and I do have it. I just don't have it handy. Um, it's Journey into Mystery Annual Number One, and that is the first appearance of both Zeus and Hercules, two other characters that could be potential. Yeah, uh, characters for yeah, this. Yeah, I've got that one. It's a great book. Yeah, so those are all go potential people to kill off. <laughs> so maybe not the greatest spec in terms of um, long term spec, <laughs> but, <laughs> because they're going to get killed. Uh, but it's one of those ones where you pick it up now. Trailer, you know, trailer comes out. You know, you see some of those gods in it, uh, and people will 
you know, there'll be a spike. There'll be a little bit of a spike. You sell off, make your, it's quick money. So this is your quick money book. So that's my last on uh, Gore, uh, uh, sorry, God, uh, love, uh, Thor, Love and Thunder. So that's my last book. Okay. So do you want to go over? Yeah, great show, more? Alan. And uh, thanks for having me on your show. Okay, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Um, now, check out part two, where we talk about two different shows on Mark's channel. Um, it's going to be really interesting. Um, these are pretty big shows that we're going to be discussing. So um, check the link below, click it, and go to Mark's channel and watch there, because there's going to be some really awesome specs there. Okay, thanks again. Bye for now.